Hey, my faithful, beloved brothers and sisters. Hope you guys are all being blessed. There has been a lot going on in the community. More particularly, the Lord is restoring reverence for the things that are holy. He's deepening our respect and commitment to sacred things that belong to Him, particularly the sacraments, such as holy, holy orders, sorry, which includes the office of the priesthood, ordaining of bishops, etc., even the sacraments of confession and holy communion as well. Well, one day, I was caught up in a temptation, and I committed mortal sin. For those of you who don't know, mortal sins are any sins that lead to the death of the soul, or in other words, eternal damnation, because death is to be separated from God who is the author of life for all eternity. These sins include pride, greed, lust, gluttony, envy, wrath, and sloth. Me and a few brothers have been doing night vigils in the chapel, which include prayer, worship, and holy mass as well as pondering and discussing the readings. I had went to confession 30 minutes before the meeting. But as I sat before Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament during worship, I couldn't help but think about my sins and feel so unworthy. I tried to pray and worship, but every time this shame would overtake me, and I couldn't even look at Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament. However, I did try to rise myself and write down what I was feeling in my heart Jesus wanted to say. Jesus began, my son, the constant remembrance of your sins is not of me or of my Holy Spirit, but from the devil. Your sins, ugly as they are, are drowned in the sea of my mercy and are forgotten. Please do not remind me of them. It is, it is as if you are saying to me, Jesus, your blood isn't enough to cover the horror of my sins. It's truly an insult to my sacrifice. Once you begin to examine this closely, Satan takes much joy in doing this, while he also encourages others to do the same. Just as an aside here, guys, Satanists love to mock, insult, and torture the Lord as much as they can through the Holy Eucharist. Satan indeed knows where to find the true body and blood of Jesus Christ, hidden under the appearance of bread and wine. The Catholic Church, even though it is corrupt, is still the Lord's Church, because it alone has the true body and blood of Jesus hidden under the Holy Sacrament. There on the altar, Jesus is present physically. I'm talking full body and blood soul and divinity, waiting for us, to comfort us, speak to us, love on us, protect us, and save us, both in this world and for the next. Satan knows this, and so he sends his minions, disguised, and they actually receive him, Jesus, and then torture him with many insults and horrors. Now the Lord isn't calling us Satanists, but he's addressing our unbelief, which hurts him more than the tortures and humiliations he receives daily from those who hate him for no reason at all. Yes, our sins offend God, but that is why he created the sacraments of reconciliation, penance, baptism, all to wash us clean and restore us back to his love and friendship. The love of God is so indescribable for us guys. Only in heaven will we ever truly experience the immensity of God's love for us. God does communicate his love to us to a certain degree through a spiritual espousal with us, which by the way no soul is exempt from. But if God were to reveal the fullness of his love, our souls would tear themselves out of our bodies and fly to him. Now, here what our Lord is describing, which, which when he was talking to me, 
It is not a remembrance that leads to contrition, meaning that the remembrance of your sins, they don't lead to contrition, repentance, and humility. But he's saying that a constant relapsing over our faults to the point where we are driven to despair and we have no hope of God's mercy. This is from the devil, guys. And also, it's our pride. Ultimately, it's the shame that separates us from God. And he, as our loving father, wants to remove this yoke off of us and clothe us in the righteousness, holiness, and infinite merits of, his, of Jesus Christ, his son. Jesus continued, When you brood over your past sins, my people, it is ultimately a sign of unbelief, unbelief in my love, my mercy, and my goodness. It is pride, because you are putting yourself in my place as judge. Do you know better than I do? Are your thoughts higher than mine? Is there something you see in yourselves I don't already know about? If I call you beloved, forgiven, accepted, and saved, why do you choose to believe the opposite? Is perhaps my blood not a love for you? Trust, my beloved children. Trust is what I am looking for. It takes a great deal of humility to trust because it involves ceasing from your own efforts and achievements and putting your hope solely in another. The anxiety and unrest in your hearts stems from your lack of trust in my goodness. Every soul indeed has a battle within themselves because it's easier to encourage others in truth, but it's hard to receive it for themselves. You will never experience the peace and joy you long for unless you decide to embrace with all your heart the truth of who I am and who I say you are before me. I'm not talking about just believing in your mind, but living it out in your daily lives. The truth is that you are forgiven. You are saved. You must believe this. I said it and promised it. When you take me at my word, trusting fully in my faithfulness, oh, how peaceful your, your life will become. It is as simple as a little child, beloved ones. That is why I said, unless you change and become like children, you shall never enter the kingdom of heaven. The reality is that children mess it up all the time, but they have an unwavering faith and trust in the love and mercy of their father. I didn't call the perfect, but the imperfect, the outcast and broken. I don't want your perfection, but only your hearts. Can you give me that, my precious ones? I started to think about St. Therese at this point, meditating on her doctrine of childlike simplicity and trust in God as our most loving and gentle father. She even became a doctor of the church, and her little way has led many saints of God, those who are weak and little, to heaven. I recommend you guys getting a copy of the book, Complete Spiritual Doctrine of St. Therese of Lisieux. That is the name of it. There are many copies on Amazon, and it's very affordable. She is indeed a wonderful saint and intercessor. And if you read her doctrine and put it into practice with the help of God's grace and through the Holy Spirit, you will reach sainthood for the glory of God. So yes, the Lord is saying it is all about faith, beloved ones. But that doesn't give us a free pass to do what we want. We still have good works to do and a labor to perform for the salvation of souls. Our hope and faith are based on the passion and death of our Lord as well as his resurrection, but we still need to cooperate with the grace of God in order to change habits in our lives that are unholy, sin patterns and mindsets that hurt our Lord dearly and displease him. Well, that's all I have for this message, my dear ones. Let me know what you think, and I'd love to hear also what Jesus has been speaking to you guys as well. God bless you all until the next message. Amen.